we have over a trillion of them and in the average adult they weigh about two kilograms what am i talking about well in today's episode of dr Noah, i'm taking you through everything you need to know about the gut microbiome from what it is what it does to us and how we can achieve optimal gut health There's been a massive explosion in the gut microbiome over the last 10 years. In fact, there have been so many studies that have been carried out to help us understand the gut microbiome in a lot more detail. And that's probably why if you've been reading on the internet or reading the news, you'll see a lot of articles about how to make your gut healthy and what is good gut health and what things can make the gut bad. And so this video serves to help you guys out there to understand a little bit of what we're talking about and what things can act negatively on the gut microbiome and things that can act quite positively to aid your health. But what is the gut microbiome? Here you ask. Well, here we have Mr. Model. Mr. Model is showing off his lovely internal anatomy here, and you can see that he's got his colon or his big guts over here, his big intestines, and beneath that are his small intestines. In fact, the gut microbiome is mostly in the large intestines or the large colon, and there's actually over a trillion of these bacteria, fungi, viruses within our colon. Most of them are actually good, but there are some that are bad. And it's all about a balance of having good versus bad. And like I said in the intro, these gut microbiomes actually weigh up to two kilograms in the average adult. Two kilograms, that is so much. We're lugging around these bacteria and viruses every single day, which help us to keep us nice and fit and healthy. Also, we hope. But where does it all come from and where do we get this gut microbiome? Well, studies have indicated that the gut microbiome is actually made up when we're in our mum's tummy as a little baby being born. And what's interesting is that as a baby, we tend to follow our mum's microbiome. So whenever mum's eating, naturally the fetus or the baby will also have the same sort of bacteria. Further studies have actually shown that babies who are born vaginally versus through a C-section actually have a different gut microbiome. Now, of course, one cannot choose how they're born and in certain situations, it's like, it's an emergency situation, you need to have a cesarean section. But the studies have actually shown that those who were born through vaginal versus a C-section actually had a better and more diverse range of microbiome than those who were born with a C-section. And similarly, those who were breastfed exclusively throughout their first year of life also had a more diverse and a healthier microbiome than those who were bottle fed. But as I said, of course, we cannot choose how we were born or what we were fed and certainly the good thing is is that as the time goes on and generally within the first year of life they tend to catch up whether it's a vaginal or a cesarean section those babies tend to catch up and the microbiota tends to be the same after their first year of life now the microbiome continues to mature throughout those first few years of life and actually by the time that you're three years old your microbiome becomes a little bit more stable and it's matured so those first three years of life are really important however do not fret because as we learn very shortly you can actually help to alter your own microbiome and make it more healthier. But Dr. Nora, why do I even care about this gut microbiome? What is it going to do for me? Well, you know, there's a few small little important functions that it can actually do to help you to have a nice and strong, healthy life. The microbiome has a number of different functions. Firstly, it produces all of the B vitamins. That's B1 through to B12. B vitamins are essential for our energy levels. They're essential for our brain function as well. So you can imagine that having these really heavy, important microbiota is actually really important for our general well-being. They also help to produce vitamin K. Now, vitamin K is a vitamin that helps with clotting of the blood. So for example, when you cut yourself, vitamin K is released to help to cause a clot in that area so you're not bleeding out forever and ever and ever. And so you can see how important the microbiomes are. Not only that, but the microbiome also helps us to digest certain foods such as rice and grain and corn. And it also helps the production of certain amino acids. Now, amino acids are the building blocks of protein. So these are super important for our general health and our cell function as well. But besides all of those amazing functions, it also helps to break down certain fibers. Now, it breaks down certain fibers into two products called acetate and butyrate. What do these do? I hear you ask. Well, acetate is used in the body and it's responsible for our energy levels, metabolism, and our appetite. Whereas butyrate, on the other hand, which is also broken down from certain fibers, thanks to the microbiota, helps to keep our gut healthy by providing energy and reducing inflammation in our cells. So as you can see, these are all really important functions. And if you have a healthy gut microbiome, it also helps you to save off any illnesses and common illnesses such as the common flu, viruses, and it also helps strengthen your immune system as well. This all sounds so good and so important, but how do I know if I've got an unhealthy gut, for example? Well, there's not really a real test that we can do to see if you've got a healthy gut microbiome. However, there are some telltale symptoms that may lead us into the direction that perhaps you don't have a healthy gut microbiome. One of those is that you're picking up 
common illnesses such as the common cold or flu really easily compared to say others who may not be for example now of course this does depend on the season and if it is a season full of bugs and flus and viruses then you probably are going to pick up a few of those but if your immune system is weakened then you're more likely to pick up more than others we also know that those who may be suffering from digestive problems such as gas and bloating and diarrhea and constipation may also have an alteration in their gut microbiome similarly those who are sleepy or feeling fatigued or have high levels of stress or anxiety may also have an issue with their gut microbiome now hold on there those are really quite non-specific symptoms and naturally there may be a whole plethora of reasons why you might have that for example you might just be working too hard or you may not be eating properly there are tons of reasons why you may have these symptoms so of course naturally if you do present with any of these symptoms make sure you do have a chat to your own medical doctor for your own full examination and assessment before you try any new medications or treatments okay so we know potentially how an unhealthy gut microbiome may present but what about a healthy gut microbiome well again there's no standard definition for a healthy gut microbiome but we do know that those who have a stable and diverse range of microbiota in their gut is actually a good indicator for a healthy microbiome and usually a healthy microbiome tends to withstand stressful situations such as taking antibiotics quite well and it recovers quite rapidly but interestingly though some studies have actually shown that some conditions are actually related to having an unhealthy gut microbiome now these studies have demonstrated that conditions such as irritable bowel syndrome or even inflammatory bowel disease such as Crohn's or ulcerative colitis conditions such as non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and even the metabolic syndrome which is where somebody is more predisposed to having um, diabetes or high cholesterol all of these conditions may be associated with having an unhealthy gut microbiome and so in part of some of the treatment options for these people is to look at their diet and to help them to improve their gut microbiota so they can actually overcome or reduce their symptoms of their condition. Okay, Dr. Nora, but how do I get a good, healthy microbiome? Do I just take some supplements from the chemist, some prebiotics, some probiotics, all these fancy big words? Well, hold your horses right there because we're going to go very shortly into supplements. But first, your gut microbiome is actually affected by a number of different things. Not only is it affected by your diet, but it's also affected with what you're doing in your day-to-day -day life. For example, if you're a very stressful person and you're very anxious and you've got lots of stress on your mind, then that can actually have a negative impact to your gut microbiome. Similarly, if you're not sleeping very well, if you're um, drinking lots of alcohol, if you're smoking, these are all negative factors that can affect your gut microbiome as well. So looking at the gut microbiome and trying to make it healthier is not only just looking at the food side of things, but it's also looking at the other social situations or the lifestyle factors that you may be having as well. But let's take a deeper dive into the food that you could be eating to help to improve your gut microbiome. There are different foods out there and you'll see lots of information out there, but essentially it comes down to eating the right types of food. It's really important to include fiber in your diet. Prebiotic fibers help to enhance a healthy gut bacteria. Now, prebiotic fibers may be found in foods such as garlic, onions, asparagus. Of course, if you take too many of these foods, then certainly it can cause some gas and some bloating in some people, but taken with limitation, it may actually help to enhance your gut's health. And if you don't fancy those kind of strong scented foods, other foods you could consume include legumes, oats or some nuts such as cashews and almond nuts. So not only are prebiotic fibers important in your diet but you should also aim for having some probiotic foods and these are foods that help to promote your gut health and these are found naturally in foods such as yogurt, cottage cheese, kefir, kombucha, you name it there's a whole bunch of stuff on your supermarket that contains natural probiotic foods. So if we have a little bit of prebiotic food and a little bit of probiotic food plus limit our stress and alcohol levels and include increase our exercise levels as well we should have a healthier gut microbiome. Now of course there are many foods that we should be avoiding. I've kind of touched on them already but certainly we should be avoiding food that contains lots of um, additives. So for example things like emulsifiers or sweeteners or certainly those foods that are ultra processed and I've got a video and I'll link it in the description below of ultra processed foods. These are foods that can actually harm our gut microbiome and they can undo all that good work that you've done uh, with your diet and with your lifestyle factors. So be really wary because we live in a convenient society where everything is just so easy to get on the shelf and if you look on the the back of the product and you you don't you can't recognize half of the ingredients on there it probably isn't a good food to have for your health and for your general health as well as your gut health but what about supplements for gut health now i have a lot of patients that come in to see me and they bring out a plethora of different boxes and they spent a whole lot of money on their supplements and generally speaking unless you have a certain medical condition that you've been advised by a certain practitioner such as a dietitian or a medical health expert to have those supplements then we generally tend to say that you can get most of your supplementations naturally through foods and as I mentioned before having those foods is probably the best thing you can do because certainly there is no one particular 
supplement out there that will actually contain all of these wonderful um, nutritional aspects of probiotics or prebiotic foods that will aid your gut health as good as you could have it through your food. So supplements should always be taken with a caution and only on the advice of your medical practitioner or your accredited dietitian. So there you have it guys, that is my quick roundup of what a healthy gut microbiome is versus an unhealthy gut microbiome and how to improve it through your diet and through lifestyle changes. I hope you guys have found this video useful and of course if you have any questions or comments please don't hesitate, drop me a line in the comment section below and I'll see you on the next one. Take care and stay healthy.